మోహన్ సార్ ఫోన్ ఎత్తట్లేదు ఒక్క నిమిషం నేను సతీష్ కు ఫోన్ చేస్తాను స్టార్టింగ్ అనదర్ త్రీ మినిట్స్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ మోహన్ సార్ మోహన్ సార్ వచ్చారా లేదు ఇంకా కనబడలేదు కనబడలేదు అదే ఫోన్ చేశాను ఫోన్ ఎత్తట్లేదు డేవిడ్ ఏమో బిజీ ఉన్నాడు డ్యూటీలో ఉన్నాడు నేనే ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ చేస్తాను సార్ సతీష్ సార్ ఆల్రెడీ ఎయిట్ ఫోర్ అవుతుంది ఏం చేద్దాము ఆల్రెడీ నైన్ మెంబర్స్ ఉన్నారు కదా స్టార్ట్ చేద్దామా సార్ చేసేద్దాం సార్ ఎయిట్ ఫైవ్ అవుతున్నది యా ఓకే గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఆల్ టుడేస్ క్లాస్ ఈజ్ ఆన్ నవ్ కండక్షన్ స్టడీ అండ్ ఈఎంజీ బై డాక్టర్ మణిప్రసాద్ రెడ్డి ఈజ్ అ సెకండ్ ఇయర్ సూపర్ స్పెషాలిటీ డిఎన్బి క్రిటికల్ కేర్ మెడిసిన్ పీజీ సిటిజన్ స్పెషాలిటీ హాస్పిటల్ ఐ వెల్కమ్ డాక్టర్ మణిప్రసాద్ రెడ్డి అండ్ హార్ట్ అవుట్ డాక్టర్ మణిప్రసాద్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ టుడే ఐ ఆమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ నర్ కండక్షన్ స్టడీస్ అండ్ ఎలక్ట్రోమయోగ్రఫీ అండ్ రైసివ్ ఇంప్లికేషన్స్ so the main aim uh, the major aim of the electro diagnostic study uh, is the localization of the disorder so the lo- uh, localization uh, can be neuropathic myopathic and nmj in neuropathic uh, uh, neuronopathy radiculopathy plexopathy mononeuropathy multiple uh, mononeuropathies and polyneuropathy in myopathic uh, whether it, uh, it can be proximal distal generalized or craniobulbar in nmj it, it may be pre- presynaptic and uh, postsynaptic 
ఈ ఎలక్ట్రో డయాగ్నోస్టిక్ ఫైన్ సార్ కీ ఎలక్ట్రో డయాగ్నోస్టిక్ ఫైండింగ్స్ ఇన్ న్యూరోపతిక్ లోకలైజేషన్ ద ఫైండింగ్స్ మే బి ఫైబర్స్ ఫైబర్ టైప్స్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ వెదర్ ఇట్ మే బి సెన్సరీ మోటార్ ఆర్ మిక్స్ పెథాలజీ ఎగ్జోనల్ ఆర్ డిమెరినేటింగ్ డిమెరినేటింగ్ కెన్ బి అక్వైర్డ్ ఆర్ ఇన్హెరిటెడ్ ద టెంపరల్ కోర్స్ వెదర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ హైపర్ అక్యూట్ అక్యూట్ సబ్ అక్యూట్ ఆర్ క్రోనిక్ ఇన్ మయోపతిక్ ఫైండింగ్స్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ ప్రాక్సిమల్ డిజిటల్ జనరలైజ్ బల్బర్ అసిమెట్రిక్ ఆర్ సిమెట్రిక్ సివెరిటీ ఆఫ్ ఇన్వాల్వ్మెంట్ ఇన్ పెథాలజీ వెదర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ బ్లాండ్ యాక్టివ్ డినర్వేషన్ మయోటోనిక్ డిస్చార్జెస్ ఇన్ ద టెంపరల్ కోర్స్ అక్యూట్ సబ్ అక్యూట్ అండ్ క్రోనిక్ ఇన్ ఎన్ఎంజే ద లోకలైజేషన్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ వెదర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ప్రాక్సిమల్ జనరలైజ్డ్ ఆర్ బల్బర్ Pathology, whether it is pre-synaptic or post-synaptic, the etiology acquired or inherited. Coming to a patient encounter, we should take a brief history and perform a direct physical examination, uh, formulate a differential diagnosis, formulate a study based on the differential diagnosis, explain the test to the patient, uh, perform the nerve conduction studies and modify which nerve conduction studies to add based on the findings as the test proceeds. perform the needle electromyography study and modify which additional muscles to sample based on the findings as the test proceeds the cardinal rules of nerve conduction studies and electromyography are nerve conduction studies and emg are an extension of the clinical examination without examination we should not directly go to the this uh, nerve conduction studies and emg question whether the uh, findings on the electrodiagnostic study are relevant to the clinical problem when in doubt think about technical factors when in doubt re examine the patient again always think about the clinical uh, electrophysiological correlation when in doubt do not overcall a diagnosis uh, motor conduction studies in this uh, picture uh, uh, they are doing uh, motor conduction studies to the median nerve there are two electrodes uh, g1 and g2 uh, motor uh, median motor study recording the abductor pollicis previs muscle stimulating the median nerve at the wrist in motor studies the belly tendon method is used for recording the active recording electrode is placed on the center of the muscle that is belly tendon method with the reference electrode uh, g2 placed distally over the tendon the compound muscle action potential the cmap is a biphasic potential with an initial negativity or upward deflection from the baseline if the recording electrodes have been properly placed with g1 over the motor end plate for each stimulation site the latency amplitude duration and area of the cmap are measured a motor conduction velocity can be calculated after two sites one distal and one proximal have been stimulated i will explain all uh, this terminology in the uh, further slides latency the latency is the time from the stimulus to the initial cmap deflection from the baseline latency that is the time uh, represents three separate processes the nerve conduction time uh, nerve conduction time from the stimulus site to the nmj the time delay across the nmj and the depolarization time across the muscle all this will add up to form, uh, uh, re- the result will be the latency the time latency measurements usually are made in milliseconds and reflect only the fastest conducting motor fibers amplitude cmap amplitude is most commonly measured from baseline to the negative peak and less you, commonly money money uh, can you tell uh, examples on this latency age amana etla untadi deentlo ane when you are telling that ah uh, in uh, the disease process lo tarava cheptan sir okay that it is increases or decreases endukante ikkade chepte people can remind better than no problem అంటే సెన్సరీ దాంట్లో మళ్ళీ లేటెన్సీ ఉంటుంది ఎలక్ట్రోమైక్రోఫిల్ ఉంటుంది అంప్లిట్యూడ్ సీమ్యాప్ అంప్లిట్యూడ్ ఇస్ మోస్ట్ కామన్లీ మెజర్ ఫ్రమ్ బేస్ లైన్ టు ద నెగిటివ్ పీక్ అండ్ లెస్ కామన్లీ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఫస్ట్ నెగిటివ్ పీక్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ పాజిటివ్ పీక్ సో ఇట్స్ యూజువల్లీ ద పీక్ అంప్లిట్యూడ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద బేస్ లైన్ టు ద నెగిటివ్ పీక్ అంప్లిట్యూడ్ రిఫ్లెక్ట్స్ ద నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ మజిల్ ఫైబర్స్ దట్ డీపోల్ రైస్ although low cmap amplitudes most often result from loss of axons that is uh, in the disease process of typical axonal neuropathy 
uh, other causes of low amplitude include conduction block from the demyelination located between the stimulation site and the recorded muscle as well as some nmj disorders and myopathies area cmap area area also is conventionally measured as the area above the baseline to the negative peak uh, it cannot be measured ma manually uh, the calculation will be done through the computer system through the machines negative peak cmap area is another measure reflecting the number of muscle fibers that depolarize differences in cmap uh, cmap area between distal and proximal stimulation sites take on special significance in the determination of conduction block from a demyelinating lesion duration cmap duration usually is measured from the initial deflection from the baseline to the first baseline crossing that is the negative peak duration the duration is uh, primarily a measure of synchrony that is the extent to which each of the individual muscle fibers fire at the same time duration characteristically increases in condition that result in slowing of some motor fibers but not others that is in demyelinating lesions this is a cmap showing uh, the amplitude the peak deflection the duration and the latency from the baseline to the initial deflection and the area will be calculated through the uh, by the machine coming to conduction velocity uh, uh, motor conduction velocity calculation median motor study recording abductor pollicis brevis stimulating wrist and elbow Distal latency, distal motor latency, distal motor latency, proximal motor latency. This is the DL will be the distal motor latency and PL will be the proximal motor latency. The only difference between distal and proximal stimulations is the latency with PL being longer than the DL. This is the only difference between the PL and DL, the distance. Uh, distal latency rep represents three separate times uh, the nerve conduction time from the uh, distal stimulation site to the neuromuscular junction the nmj transmission time and the muscle depolarization time a b b is the nmj time and c is the muscle uh, depolarization time uh, distal latency uh, cannot be used alone to calculate a motor conduction velocity two stimulations are necessary proximal latency includes the nerve conduction time from the distal stimulation site to the neuromuscular junction the nmj transmission time and the muscle depolarization time as well as the nerve conduction time between proximal and distal stimulation sites that is d the distance a b c and d if uh, distal latency is subtracted from the proximal latency only the nerve conduction time between the distal and proximal stimulation site remains the distance between these two sites can be measured and the conduction velocity can be calculated uh, velocity definition distance by time conduction velocity reflects only the fastest conducting fibers in the nerve being studied sensory conduction studies in contrast to motor conduction studies in which the cmap reflects conduction along motor nerve nmj and muscle fibers in sensory conduction studies only the nerve fibers are assessed onset latency the onset latency is the time from the stimulus to the initial negative deflection from baseline for biphasic snaps or to the initial positive peak for triphasic snaps sensory onset latency represents nerve conduction time from the stimulus site to the uh, recording electrodes for the largest cutaneous sensory fibers in the nerve being studied peak latency Uh, the peak latency is measured at the midpoint of the first negative peak although the population of sensory fibers represented by the peak latency is not known in contrast to the onset latency which represents the fastest conducting fibers in the nerve being studied measurement of peak latency has several advantages the peak uh, latency can be ascertained in a straightforward manner there is practically no inter, uh, inter individual variation in its determination in contrast the onset latency can be obscured by noise or by the stimulus artifact making it difficult to determine precisely this is the picture showing onset latency and peak latency onset and peak latency measurements each have their own advantages and disadvantages onset latency represents the fastest conducting uh, fibers and can be used to calculate conduction velocity however for many potentials especially small ones 
it is difficult to precisely place the latency marker on the initial deflection from the baseline marking the peak latency is straightforward with nearly no inter examiner variation however the population of the fibers represented by peak latency is unknown it cannot be used to calculate a conduction velocity amplitude the snap amplitude is most commonly measured from the baseline to the negative peak but it can also be measured from the first negative peak to the next positive peak the snap amplitude reflects the sum of the all individual sensory uh, fibers that depolarize low snap amplitudes indicate a definite disorder of the peripheral nerve duration similar to the cmap duration snap duration is easily measured from the onset of the potential to the first baseline crossing the snap duration typically is much shorter than the cmap duration typically 1.5 milliseconds versus 5 to 6 milliseconds in cmap conduction velocity unlike the calculation of the motor conduction velocity which requires two stimulation sites sensory conduction velocity can be determined with one stimulation simply by dividing the distance traveled by the onset latency essentially distal, uh, distal conduction velocity and onset latency are the same measurement they uh, they differ only by multiplication factor that is the distance sensory conduction velocity represents the speed of the fastest myelinated cutaneous sensory fibers in the nerve being studied this is the snap showing amplitude duration uh, peak latency and the onset latency onset latency can be variable this is a comparison between uh, compound uh, cmap and uh, snap cmap uh, in the, this is a top uh, picture a cmap amplitude usually is measured in millivolts uh, whereas snaps are small potentials measured in the microvolt range um, cmap negative peak duration is usually 5 to 6 milliseconds whereas snap uh, negative peak duration is much shorter typically for 1 to 2 milliseconds when both sensory and motor fibers are stimulated uh such as when performing anti drone <laughs> differences uh, usually at a unknown potential to be uh, recognized as a drainer or muscle uh, fiber special considerations in sensory conduction studies anti dromic versus orthodromic uh, recording when a nerve is depolarized conduction occurs equally well in both directions away from the stimulation site consequently uh, sensory conduction studies may be performed using either antidromic stimulating towards the sensory receptor or orthodromic stimulating away from the sensory receptor techniques for instance when studying median sensory fibers to the index finger one can stimulate the median nerve at the wrist and record the potential with ring electrodes over the index finger that is antidromic study conversely the same ring electrodes can be used for stimulation and the potential recorded over the median nerve or the wrist orthodromic ah teestam teeste malli pettakodadu kada adi so uh, conversely the same ring electrodes can be used mohan rao sir meeru adi konni silent lo pettandi so conversely the same ring electrodes can be used to for stimulation and the potential recorded over the wrist uh, for the median this is orthodromic study latencies and conduction velocities should be identical with each uh, with either method although the amplitude generally is higher in the antidromically conducted potentials antidromic and orthodromic sensory studies uh, the the top trace antidromic study stimulating wrist recording index finger bottom dress orthodromic study stimulating index finger recording at the wrist latencies and conduction velocities are identical for both that is that uh, time duration and the velocities are both uh, same for the both the antidromic method has the advantage of a higher amplitude snap but is followed by a large volume conducted motor potential in this orthodromic study both sensory and motor uh, fibers are stimulated that's why there will be a large uh, volume conducted motor potential followed uh, following the snap if the snap is absent in antidromic study care must be taken not to confuse the volume conducted motor potential as the snap note the difference in duration between snap and cmap which helps discriminate between the snap and the volume conducted motor potential that that follows misinterpretation error with antidromic sensory studies 
in an antidromic study the entire nerve is stimulated including both sensory and motor fibers which frequently results in the snap being followed by volume conducted motor potential normal antidromic ulnar uh, response stimulating the wrist and the and recording the fifth digit notice the ulnar snap which is followed by the large volume conducted motor response one can recognize the snap by its characteristic shape and especially by its brief negative peak duration of approximately 1.5 milliseconds also notice the snap usually occurs earlier than the volume conducted motor response in the bottom picture if the sensory response is absent that is in in a disease condition and an antidromic study is performed one might mistake the first component of the volume conducted motor response for the snap the key to not making this mistake is to note the longer duration of the motor potential which often has a higher amplitude and slow latency or conduction velocity in this case the negative peak duration of this mistaken uh, potential is approximately 2.5 milliseconds in some cases one still may not be certain in those situations performing the study orthodromically will settle the issue as no volume conducted motor poten uh, potential will occur with an uh, orthodromic study this is the clinical significance of antidromic and orthodromic study coming to imp important basic patterns neuropathic lesions myopathic lesions neuromuscular junction disorders in neuropathic lesions the axonal loss demyelination conduction block this is a normal study uh, showing proximal and distal latencies uh, note the normal distal latency uh, that is 4 milli <coughs> volts and conduction velocity that is uh, more than 49 milli uh, meters per second axonal loss in axonal loss lesions amplitude decreases conduction velocity is normal as the myelin is intact the conduction velocity will be normal or slightly slowed but not 130% of the upper limit of normal the morphology of the potential uh, does not change between proximal and distal sites the morphology will be remaining in both proximal and distal sites demyelination demyelination resulting in uniform slowing is most often associated with inherited conditions example charcot marie tooth uh, polyneuropathy conduction velocity is markedly markedly slowed 130% of the upper limit of normal however there is usually no change in the configuration between proximal and distal uh, stimulation sites demyelination with conduction block or temporal dispersion this is a different entity demyelination uh, market slowing of the conduction velocity and distal latency but also with change in potential morphology uh, between distal and proximal stimulation sites is most often associated with acquired causes of demyelination this pattern may be seen in gb syndrome or other acquired demyelinating conditions model of conduction block in acquired demyelinating lesions demyelination is often a patchy multifocal process when the nerve is stimulated proximal to the conduction block the compound muscle action potential that is cmap drops in amplitude and area and becomes dispersed uh, as shown in the bottom figure in a normal uh, nerve the cmap morphology usually is similar between distal and proximal stimulation sites coming to late responses routine nerve conduction studies typically assess conduction in distal nerve segments where the nerves are more anatomically accessible in contrast Uh, FA and H reflex responses also assess conduction proximal nerve segments. Accordingly, a distinct advantage of uh, performing these late responses is that they detect conduction abnormalities over nerve segments not tested by routine studies. Because these late uh, late responses interfere uh, interface at the level of the spinal cord, they also provide valuable information about the physiology of the central nervous system. Coming to F wave, F wave, uh, F or foot. Uh, where they were uh, first described are a type of late motor response when a motor uh, nerve axon is electrically stimulated at any point an action potential is propagated in both directions away from the initial stimulation site the distally propagated impulse give rise to the cmap however an impulse also conducts proximally to the anterior horn cell depolarizing the axon hillock and causing the axon to backfire this leads to a small additional muscle depolarization that is f wave at a longer latency only about 2% of uh, 2% of uh, axons backfire with each stimulus f waves vary in latency and shape because different population of neurons normally backfire with each stimulus okay i joined <laughs>
the most reliable measure of the f wave is the minimum latency of 10 to 20 firings f wave and h reflex since the latencies of f waves and h reflexes are, are similar a clear distinction should be made between these late responses the physiological features of f waves that distinguish them from h reflex include f wave is not a reflex it is due to the direct antidromic activation of spinal motor neurons the same motor axon serves as the afferent and different arc f waves are typically elicited by higher stimulus in intensities than the h reflex supramaximal stimulation for the direct motor response should be used to elicit the f wave this stimulus in intensity abolishes the h reflex the amp amplitude of f waves is typically much lower than the h reflex f wave amplitude is generally less than 5% of the maximum cmap amplitude f wave responses are characterized by variability in amplitude latency and configuration as a result of activation of different spinal motor neurons with each stimulus f waves are ubiquitous that is they can be recorded from almost all uh, skeletal muscles in an adult physiological features of the h reflex include the h reflex is a uh, it's not a wave it's a reflex is a monosynaptic reflex elicited by electrical stimulation of the large group of any afferent fibers in the lower limbs it can be regarded as electrical counterpart of achilles reflex in which a mechanical stretch activates the one a fibers afferents the h reflex is elicited by a low intensity stimulus that is often sub threshold for the direct motor uh, motor response with increases in the stimulus intensity a maximal h reflex is elicited when the direct motor response is still sub maximal further increase in the intensity will increase the direct motor response while reducing the amplitude of the h reflex with supramaximal stimulation for the direct motor response the h reflex is abolished and replaced by the f wave the h reflex latency is constant when recording with surface electrodes and directly related to the length of the reflex arc h reflex is not ubiquitous in adults this response is routinely recorded from only calf muscles that is gastrocnemius and soleus less commonly an h reflex can also be uh, recorded from forearm flexors slight voluntary contraction can also potentiate h reflex responses in other muscles uh, this is a comparison between cmap and f waves consecutive tracings showing normal cmap responses and f waves recorded from abductor hallucis muscle following supramaximal stimulation f waves re uh, requires higher stimulations uh, to the tibial nerve at the medial malleolus note the variability in amplitude latency and configuration uh, as a result of antidromic activation of different spinal motor neurons with each stimulus uh, this is cmap and h reflex consecutive tracing showing the contrasting behavior of normal cmap and h reflex responses recorded from the soleus muscle following increases in stimulus intensity to tibial nerve and the popliteal fossa initially a low intensity stimulus that is sub threshold for the direct cmap elicits the h reflex with increases in stimulus intensity the cmap amplitude increases while the h reflex amplitude decreases supramaximal stimulation for the cmap abolishes the h reflex coming to electromyography the motor unit consists of a single motor neuron and its motor axon uh, two motor units shown a and b in the figure which gives rise to branching axons each of which terminates in a neuromuscular junction on a single muscle fiber nerve impulses passing down a single motor neuron will thus trigger a synchronous contraction in all muscle or muscle fibers supplied by that neuron the motor unit is thus the uh, minimum functional component of the contraction needle emg uh, emg examination the needle examination of skeletal muscle consists of the assessment of insertional activity caused by movement of the needle electrode into the muscle spontaneous activity recorded with the muscle at rest motor unit action poten uh, motor unit potentials during minimal voluntary muscle contractions and pattern of recruitment during progressively increasing level of muscle contraction coming to insertional insertional activity it is classified as normal or increased depending on whether the brief burst of activity associated with needle movement uh, ceases with or outlasts the needle movement respectively so uh, it is classified as decreased when the activity is absent or diminished despite the needle movement when we insert a needle into the muscle 
if there is a uh, there if there is a brief burst of activity uh, it is normal uh, if the uh, with the needle movement ceases or if the needle movement ceases and then the activity uh, lasting for a uh, more time it is increased instructional activity and it is classified as decreased when the activity is absent uh, even though we, we insert the needle into the muscle assessment of spontaneous activity spontaneous activity is electrical activity recorded from muscle at rest after reinsertional activity has subsided and when there is no voluntary muscle contraction or external stimulus normal muscle fibers show no response uh, no spontaneous activity outside of the end plate region hence spontaneous activity if reproducible in several muscle sites is an unmistakable sign of abnormality that is there, there should be an abnormality if there is an activity and one of the most useful findings in clinical emg examples of spontaneous activity in emg are fibrillation potentials these are the pattern will be regular and periodic the arrow mark shows the fibrillation potentials these are positive uh, sharp waves these are also regular and periodic and fasciculation potentials random and irregular uh, complex repetitive discharges regular abrupt onset and cessation less common forms of uh, spontaneous activity include myotonic discharges myokinetic discharges neuromyotonic discharges and cramp discharges these are the uh, uh, spontaneous activity waveforms myotonic discharges these are uh, like waxing and waning pattern myokinetic discharges regular and semi rhythmic bursts neuromyotonic discharges bursts of uh, high frequency discharges that wane uh, over time neuromyotonic discharges and cramp like discharges muscle fiber show spontaneous activity when the needle electrode is positioned near the region of the end plate this end plate activity is normal and has no clinical significance the end plate activity may present as either end plate noise or end plate spikes this is normal physiology when we place a electrode near the end plate assessment of motor unit potentials all voluntary muscle activity is controlled by the motor unit and recorded electrically as a motor unit potential hence the mup reflects the sum of all individual muscle fiber potentials from a single uh, motor unit that occur almost synchronously within the recording radius of the needle electrode in routine clinical emg practice the assessment of mup is, is accomplished primarily primarily by visual inspection and semi quantitative analysis during a low level voluntary contraction the mup is usually cat categorized by its duration amplitude number of phases that is biphasic triphasic or polyphasic or number of turns and pattern of recruitment normal neurogenic or myopathic the duration of an mup is the time from the initial deflection away from the baseline to the final return to the baseline it reflects the area of the motor unit since even relatively distant muscle fibers may contribute to the initial and terminal low amplitude portions of the mup the duration normally varies from 5 milliseconds to 15 milliseconds with uh, values gradually increasing with age amplitude of the mup is measured from the peak to peak of the potential the amplitude is determined from the action potentials of the muscle fibers that are in the vicinity of the tip of the needle electrode it is estimated that in the normal state only about 20 muscle fibers contribute to the major spike of the mup the number of phases of an mup is defined as the number of times that the potential crosses the baseline plus 1 normally mups have four or fewer uh, phases and are typically biphasic or triphasic configuration depends on the synchrony of firing of the muscle fibers in the vicinity of the needle mups with more than four phases are termed polyphasic and are usually less than 50% 15% to unless mups in most muscles however some mups also show several turns or direction directional changes without crossing the baseline these serrated mups with excessive turns or polyphasic mups reflect excessive desynchronization of the action potentials of the muscle fibers near the uh, needle assessment of firing pattern and recruitment mups are further characterized by their firing pattern and recruitment all mups under voluntary control fire in a semi rhythmic pattern uh, mups uh, mup recruitment reflects the progressive activation of muscle by successive recruitment of motor units to accomplish a motor task hence mup rec uh, recruitment reflects how many motor neurons are activated 
for a particular muscle and, the, and therefore a measure of how many muscle fibers of that muscle are activated. The higher the recruitment, the stronger the muscle contraction. Motor units and MUPs are generally recruited in order of smallest to largest as contraction increases. That is smallest motor neurons with fewest muscle fibers to largest motor neurons with most muscle fibers. This orderly pattern of recruitment is known as Henneman size principle. This is the figure showing the principle. According to Henneman size principle, smaller motor neurons innervating smaller motor units discharge initially with minimal effort. These smaller motor units give rise to smaller motor unit potentials. With great effort of uh, greater effort of contraction, the larger motor neurons innervating larger motor units are activated, giving rise to larger MUPs. Examples of myopathic normal neurogenic recruitment of motor unit action potentials. Uh, in myopathic disorders, there is full recruitment of small MUPs relative to force of contraction. In neurogenic disorders, there is a loss of motor units in a muscle, either because of loss of motor axons or conduction block, such that the reduced number of MUPs must fire at higher frequencies to accomplish the motor task. Important technical factors influencing nerve conduction studies and electromyography, uh, physiological factors, temperature, age, height, proximal versus distal nerve segments, anomalous innervations, non-physiological factors, electrode impedance mismatch and 60 Hertz interference filters, ele uh, electronic averaging stimulus artifact, cathode position, supramaximal stimulation, co-stimulation of ad adjacent nerves, electrode placement for motor studies, antidromic versus autodromic re recording, distance between recording electrodes and nerve, distance between active and reference recording electrodes, limb position and distance measurements, limb position and waveform morphology, sweeps, speed and sensitivity. Approach to electrodiagnostic studies in the ICO. The common different uh, neurologic differential diagnosis of weakness in the intensive care unit. Uh, coming to CNS, brain, uh, encephalopathy, infarction, seizures, anoxia, SAH, spinal cord, infarction, demyelination, and trauma. PNS, anterior tonsil, uh, paralytic poliomyelitis, a a a ALS, nerves, Guillain-Barre syndrome, critical illness, polyneuropathy, porphyria, toxins, neuromuscular junction, botulism, MG, persistent drug-induced neuromuscular junction blockade, toxic, lumbar tear and myasthenic syndrome. Coming to muscle, critical illness, myopathy, adult onset, acid maltase deficiency, myopathy, inflammatory myopathy, toxic, and uh, periodic paralysis. Recognition of neuromuscular disorders by presentation in the ICU. Initial presentation, primarily rapidly progressive weakness with or without respiratory weakness. Uh, the differentials will be paralytic poliomyelitis, GBS, porphyria, severe toxic neuropathy, botulism, myasthenic gravis. Uh, uncommon unless there is a coexisting exacerbating factor. Toxic myopathy with rhabdomyolysis and periodic paralysis. An initial presentation, primary respiratory failure in isolation. Uh, DDs will be paralytic uh, poliomyelitis, uh, MG, GBS, adult onset, acid mal uh, maltase deficiency myopathy, bilateral phrenic neuropathies. Generalized weakness discovered as a patient is recovering from medical or surgical condition, most commonly critical illness myopathy or critical illness polyneuropathy, and persistent neuromuscular junction blockage. Failure to wean as a patient is recording, recovering from medical or surgical condition, uh, critical illness myopathy and critical illness polyneuropathy, unilateral or bilateral phrenic neuropathies, especially after thoracic surgery, persistent NMJ blockade, uh, in myasthenia gravis, ALS, LMS. Important electrodiagnostic patterns in the ICU. Nerve conduction studies. Uh, coming to normal motor and sensory conduction studies, with normal F responses. This pattern usually implies that the peripheral nervous system is intact and that the etiology of the weakness most likely is central. However, this pattern can also occur in several neuro neuromuscular conditions. The most important to exclude is a postsynaptic NMJ, that is MG, whereas presynaptic neuromuscular junction disorders typically have low motor amplitudes. Most postsynaptic disorders usually have a normal, uh, usually are normal at baseline. Thus, in patients with generalized weakness and normal routine motor and sensory conduction studies, it is essential to perform 
slow repetitive nerve stimulation in at least one hour to look for a decremental response. Normal motor and sensory conduction studies with abnormal F responses. This is characteristic, uh, characteristic pattern seen within the first few days of GBS. GBS typically begins at the root level as a demyelinating polyradiculopathy. As time proceeds, it turns into a demyelinating polyradiculoneuropathy. Thus, nerve conduction studies often are normal initially, especially for the F responses, which are delayed, uh, impersistent, dispersed, or absent. Low or absent uh, motor responses with normal sensory responses. Although this pattern can be seen in polyradiculopathy, most often this pattern implies a pure motor, uh, motor disorder at the level of the muscle, NMJ or motor neuron. This pattern is uh, distinctly unusual in most myopathies, which preferentially affect proximal muscles, which are not recorded in routine nerve conduction studies. However, diffusely low motor responses are classic patterns are the classic pattern seen in critical illness myopathy, which affects proximal and distal muscles. It also is a classic pattern seen in presynaptic NMJ disorders such as botulism and uh, lambert myasthenic syndrome. Finally, it is also the pattern seen in acute anterior horn cell disease as occurs in paralytic poliomyelitis if the nerve conduction studies are performed after five days of onset when there has been sufficient time for valerian degeneration to occur. Low or absent motor and sensory responses. The presence of abnormal sensory responses denotes that a neuropathy must be present. However, a uh, caution must uh, be taken before attributing weakness in the ICU to the neuropathy because many patients in the ICU have comorbid comorbidities that may cause an incidental neuropathy such as pre-existing diabetes, renal failure or liver failure. If such pre-existing comorbids do not exist, however, then the presence of low or absent motor and sensory responses likely indicates a new peripheral neuropathy. Motor and sensory uh, nerve conduction studies with demyelinating features. Demyelinating features indicate, include very prolonged or absent F responses, markedly prolonged distal motor latencies, and markedly slowed conduction velocities. Additionally, asymmetric, asymmetry in conduction studies from side and side, especially if there is conduction block and or temporal dispersion of the motor nerves at non entrapment sites, usually signifies an acquired demyelinating uh, neuropathy. In this case, the acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy variant of GBS should be considered if the condition is less than four weeks in duration and or chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy if more than six to eight weeks in duration. Uh, electromyography, decreased uh, condition, uh, decreased recruitment with normal configuration motor unit action potential. This is the pattern seen in either an acute axonal uh, lesion or a demyelinating lesion with conduction block. This pattern in an ICU patient with profound weakness is consistent with GPS, early critical illness polyneuropathy or paralytic poliomyelitis. Caution must be taken in interpreting a decreased recruitment pattern. Patients who are weak from central causes may have poor activation of normal configuration uh, muscle action, um, muscle, uh, motor unit action potential, resulting in an incomplete interference pattern on the EMG screen, which should not be confused with a decreased recruitment pattern. Decreased recruitment with de-enervated motor unit action potential. This is a pattern of subacute or chronic neuropathic disorder. Typically, many weeks and usually months in duration. This pattern would be expected in ALS, a pre existing polyneuropathy, or critical illness polyneuropathy in a patient who has had a prolonged hospitalization. Short duration, low amplitude motor unit action potentials. This is a pattern seen in a myopathy often associated with an early recruitment pattern. This pattern occurs in critical illness myopathy and other severe myopathies. However, it is important to keep in mind that severe NMJ disorders can display a similar pattern. In this case, muscle fibers are not lost but blocked, resulting in fewer muscle fibers per motor unit. Decreased activation. Activation is the ability to fire the available motor unit action potentials faster. Activation is a central process. Thus, decreased activation implies that the source of the weakness resides in the CNS. This can result from actual CNS disease as well as sedation, pain, or poor cooperation of the patient. The neurological diagnosis and associated electrodiagnostic findings in the intensive care unit.
disorder encephalopathy or other central nervous system disorders motor uh, nerve conduction studies normal if responses may be absent if patient is sedated or in coma sensory nerve uh, ncs are normal Re repetitive nerve stimulation is normal needle emg findings poor activation uh, als axonal loss pattern are normal uh, for motor ncs sensory ncs uh, normal uh, repeated <coughs> nerve stimulation test rarely will decrement on slow rns needle emg findings diffuse active denervation and reinnervation with decreased recruitment and activation of uh, meps poliomyelitis axonal loss pattern are normal for motor ncs sensory ncs is normal rns is normal uh, needle emg findings first weeks decreased recruitment of normal configuration meps later active denervation followed by reinnervation gbs demyelinating pattern for motor ncs especially absent f responses early in the course Sensory NCS initially normal, later sural sparing followed by low amplitudes and slow velocities. RNS is normal. Uh, needle EMG findings first few weeks, few weeks, uh, decreased recruitment of uh, normal configuration MEPs. Later active denervation followed by reinnervation. Critical illness polyneuropathy. Axonal loss pattern are absent for motor NCS. Uh, sensory NCS axonal loss pattern are absent. RNS is normal. A needle EMG findings, distal pattern of decreased recruitment with or without denervation and reinnervation depending on the time course of the disease. Phrenic neuropathy, absent or low amplitudes on phrenic motor studies for motor NCS. Sensory NCS is normal, RN is normal. A needle EMG findings, normal in limbs. If EMG of the diaphragm is done, it will show a neuropathic pattern. Botulism uh, for motor NCS, uh, low amplitudes throughout. A sensory uh, snap uh, is normal. Decre uh, decrement of uh, slow repeated nerve uh, stimulation, increment on rapid RNS or brief exercise. Uh, AMG, unstable or small, short and polyphasic MUPs with normal or early recruitment. Mycenae gravis, uh, mot uh, motor NCS normal, sensory normal. But in RNS, decrement on slow RNS, repair of the dec uh, decrement after brief exercise. EMG, normal or unstable or small, short and polyphasic MEPs with normal or early recruitment. Lambert Eaton Myasthenic Syndrome. Uh, motor <coughs> NCS, low amplitudes throughout. Sensory is normal. RNS, decrement on slow RNS, increment on rapid RNS or brief exercise. EMG, normal or unstable, uh, same as uh, Myasthenic Gravis. Persistent NMG blockade, low amplitudes throughout. For motor NCS, sensory is normal. Decrement on slow RNS, uh, normal or unstable or small, short and polyphasic MEPs is normal or early uh, recruitment. Critical illness myopathy, uh, motor low amplitudes throughout, sensory is normal, RNS is normal. Uh, EMG, small, short and polyphasic MEPs with normal or early recruitment, active denervation may be present. Coming to adult onset acid maltase deficiency myopathy. Motor, sensory, and RNS are normal. In EMG, myotonic discharges and fibrillation potentials with small, short, and polyphasic MUPs restricted to paraspinal, abdominal, and very proximal muscles. Periodic paralysis, low amplitudes during an attack for motor NCS. Uh, sensory and RNS are normal. Coming to EMG, normal, small, short, and polyphasic MUPs late in the course. Myotonic discharges may be present in hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. These are my references. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mani. And uh, I think uh, we need to daily practice these things to understand one better. Uh, and uh, if you have any studies, then you should have been better if you have shown any which we have done. Uh, I think uh, in the next class, if you have any uh, photographs of the studies, then you put it. So that we can have a diagnosis in that. We can Hello? discuss for five Hello? You are not able to hear me? Hello? Sir, we listen, sir. Hello? Yeah. So if you if you have put some uh, some tracings, real tracings uh, which we have done to the patients, then we can try to identify. Presently, you please post this uh, uh, PowerPoint into the group. 
so that we can look into it and to next week you put uh, two or three reports so that we can have a discussion and Hello? dialogue full of theory full of theories you know and konjam konjam confusing practical experience kaval kada ah adhe sir andukane nenu andukane nenu em antunnanu ante నెక్స్ట్ టైము ఒకటి చేస్తే కనుక ఏది మన రిపోర్ట్ పెడితే కనుక వీ కెన్ లుక్ ఇన్ టు ద డయాగ్నోసిస్ అండ్ వీ కెన్ ఆల్సో ద ట్రేసింగ్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో గివెన్ ఇన్ ద సపోజ్ ఇట్ హీ హాస్ గివెన్ ఎ ట్రేసింగ్ ఇన్ ద మనం ముందు రోజు ఒక గ్రూప్ లో పెట్టేస్తే ట్రేసింగ్స్ అన్ని కూడా మనం వీ కెన్ హ్యావ్ ఎ డిస్కషన్ ఆఫ్ ఫైవ్ ఆర్ టెన్ మినిట్స్ ఫైవ్ టు టెన్ మినిట్స్ డిస్కస్ చేయొచ్చు అని అనుకుంటున్నాను ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్ అంటే క్లియర్ కట్ గా వీ నీడ్ టు డిఫరెన్షియేట్ బిట్వీన్ పెరిఫెరల్ అండ్ సెంట్రల్ అన్నప్పుడు ఎన్సిఎస్ చేస్తాం ఏం డిస్కషన్ లేవా చెక్కిన అయిపోయిందా నో మోర్ డిస్కషన్స్ దెన్ రాణి అశ్విను మోనంగా దేవి సతీష్ సర్ ఆనెస్ట్లీ స్పీకింగ్ అసలు ఎప్పుడు దీని వేర్ చూడలేదు సర్ నా మీద ఆనెస్ట్ కానట్టు ఎప్పుడు అంటే న్యూరాలజిస్ట్ కప్ చెప్పాడో తప్పితే నెవర్ లుక్డ్ ఇన్టు ఎన్సిఎస్ సర్ ఎన్ఎంజి ఇట్ ఇస్ బియాండ్ మై స్కోప్ అండ్ కెపాసిటీ అందుకే కదా చెక్కిన అని అడిగాం రాణి సరే వాట్ ఎవర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఎనీథింగ్ ఇస్ దేర్ అక్షిత్ అక్షిత్ ఇస్ వెరీ స్టూడియస్ హలో గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ ఏంటి ఎనీథింగ్ రిగార్డింగ్ దిస్ టాక్ వి షుడ్ హావ్ సమ్ డిస్కషన్ ఉండాలి కదా లైట్ సరే సార్ క్వశ్చన్స్ పోస్ట్ చేస్తానన్నారు కదా నెక్స్ట్ వీక్ డిస్కస్ చేద్దాం సార్ ఒక చిన్న రిక్వెస్ట్ దేకిమ సార్ చెప్పండి ఒక రెండు ఆర్టికల్స్ ఏమైనా మంచి ఉంటే పంపిస్తుంది ఏమి కూడా చదువుకొని పోస్ట్ లేకపోతే అందరం అనుకుంటాం కానీ అవద్దు మళ్ళీ గూగుల్ లో చూడడం తప్ప ఎవరికి అంత టైం చేయడం ఉండదు కాబట్టి ఆర్టికల్స్ పోస్ట్ చేస్తే ఆ ఆర్టికల్స్ ఒక చదువుతాం అట్లీస్ కొంత నాలెడ్జ్ వస్తుంది చెప్పండి 
కొన్ని కొన్ని కామన్ కండిషన్స్ వాట్ వి సీన్ ఐసీయూస్ అలాంటివి నార్మల్ అండ్ హౌ వి రికగ్నైజ్ అలాగా నార్మల్ ఇది గ్రాఫ్ ఎలాగా దాని కింద మన కండిషన్ ఎలాగా అలాంటి అట్లీస్ట్ ఒక ఫోర్ ఫైవ్ వరకు పెడితే కొంచెం అన్న ఆ నాలెడ్జ్ అలా రిటైన్ అవుతుంది లేకపోతే అలా ఎవాపరేట్ అయిపోతాయి ఎస్ మేడం అందుకనే Uh, we will put few whatever we have done meer kuda em em chesara pettandi group lo pedithe we will have a discussion in the next uh, week for 10 15 minutes tarvata if possible evarani eeg chesara eeg 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 chaansa me chestaru kada neurologist advice chestaru kaal madam mana presentation madam mana presentation oh, presentation ah ప్రెసెంట్ అది యూజువల్ గా వాళ్ళు చేసి అనలైజ్ చేసే వాళ్ళు ప్రెసెంట్ చేస్తే కొంచెం ఎక్కువ అర్థమయ్యేటట్టు చెప్తారేమో మేడం అడగండి మేడం మీ న్యూరాలజిస్ట్ మనం ఊరికనే థియరీ లాగా చెప్పుకునే కంటే హూ అనలైజెస్ దీస్ వాళ్ళు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేస్తే ఇంక ఎక్కువ గుర్తుంటుందేమో సార్ మోహన్ సార్ ఎవరన్నా అరేంజ్ చేయగలుగుతారా ఈజీ మీద నెక్స్ట్ వీక్ ఏం కావాలి చెప్పండి ఇంక నెక్స్ట్ వీక్ మీద ఈజీ మీద న్యూరాలజిస్ట్ చూపించిన సార్ న్యూరాలజిస్ట్ తో ఈజీ తో ఈజీ మీద చెప్పాను సార్ సో దట్ బిఫోర్ దట్ విల్ రీడ్ అండ్ కమ్ హలో సార్ సార్ షేర్డ్ బుక్ ఇన్ దూప్ సార్ ఇట్స్ గోల్డ్ స్టాండర్డ్ బుక్ ఫర్ ఎన్సిఎస్ అండ్ ఈఎంజీ బుక్ మొత్తం కష్టం కానీ పవర్ పాయింట్ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ పేజెస్ ఓకే సార్ రైట్ ఓకే సార్ ఇఫ్ నో క్వశ్చన్స్ విల్ వైండ్ అప్ Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Sir, who is taking, sir? Meera, Rani Madam, responsibility, EEG. What is it? EEG, next week. Next week, you have to do it with the neurologist? You have to do it with the Rani Madam. I have to do it with the Rani Madam. I have to do it with the Rani Madam. I have to do it with the Rani Madam. I have to do it with the Rani Madam. Sir, you have to do it with the Rani Madam. Okay, sir. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. న్యూరాలజిస్ట్ కూడా ఉంటారు కాబట్టి